Uh, well, listen, uh, first off, welcome everybody. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's been a year like no other, uh, obviously, at CDL for everybody, <clears throat> but certainly for what we're trying to do. We are a whole program that's predicated on up until uh, COVID meeting in person. And so this has been a, a real uh, exercise in trying to reimagine how we do our work. Uh, and so thank you all for participating. And we're in the midst of a revolution where technology is not just going to be limited to, to consumer needs and to ads that we see and things that were sold. I believe this revolution is going to bring personalized medicine. It's going to bring precision medicine. And I believe the CDL community is the perfect example of where we'll come from and the CDL investment community have a front seat to see it. And, you know, I think what's amazing about CDL is the amount of uh, sort of work that goes into applications for all of these second generation hardware, uh, but also the, the present and future quantum computers. We, we started out in 2017. Uh, you know, we focused a lot on applications in, in partnership with our tech partners like D-Wave and so on. And we've evolved to include companies in our cohort uh, that develop second generation quantum hardware up to and including full stack quantum computers like you'll see later today. today. We've engaged, you know, by our accounts, a quarter of the, the quantum startups worldwide, including 25 of which that have set up shop in, in Toronto. And, and you, you know, uh, in, in the end, you know, the fact that we've created 400 jobs and raised 200 million uh, is really a testament to our amazing scientists, mentors, and her really lean, mean, you know, quantum team. Attending the super session confirmed what we've long known a lot of what you all are doing, whether it's for space, whether it's for prime, whether it's for AI and quantum, etc., is always at the pursuit of more efficiency, of more productivity. And, and there has always been what's called a productivity paradox when it comes to the, the development of all those new technologies and you're all trying to unlock that. And there is no doubt, even though it's not centered directly on the emission of greenhouse gases, which a lot of what we do in the climate section is about, you're all making a difference and that's what matters. For the many challenges, opportunities and the quirks, I love the people and the business of agriculture. It has been a personal highlight and privilege to be involved in the inaugural Ag Stream. DDL Rocky team you have brought together an impressive roster of the world's best scientists and mentors to assist CDL ag companies that are reimagining re agriculture. Many of the CDL Matter Ventures are working with platform technologies, which means they can enter multiple markets, but really need to carefully consider what their first market will be, how that fits in with their ultimate grand vision of what type of company they want to build, the problems they want to solve, and there's also optionality around business model. Healthcare. This is a massive opportunity, could be trillions. This is about consumer empowerment. It's something that doctors, guilds are afraid of, nurses unions don't like, and these are rational fears because lawyers, accountants, and bank managers have all had their livelihoods significantly changed by these kinds of technologies. But this is where the real potential to empower and emancipate lies. This is massive social and economic potential. <clears throat> it can be substantially enhanced by artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence is a lot faster and frankly, a lot more accurate most of the time than human intelligence. When is now and where it is the USA because let's build something massive. What COVID drove for everyone was a realization that, that most of commerce activity was far behind where technology uh, is and what they could be. And so now we're trying to catch up. It has never been a greater time to be an entrepreneur, and it's never been a greater time to be an entrepreneur in a commerce space. Because simply speaking, the world is massive, the niches are huge, and the opportunities keep creating themselves.
To give you an idea of where blockchains have come uh, in the last five years, in 2016, we brought Cosmos through the CDL before the blockchain stream existed. We were pitching a vision of a proliferation of energy efficient, proof of stake blockchains, ideas of sovereignty and interoperability for the world's communities. And we were poorly understood, probably rightly so, when we were dropped after the third session. And five years later, that vision we were pitching is really a reality. The Cosmos technology secures over $50 billion in market cap across a dozen or so cryptocurrencies, including some of the most widely used ones, the Binance chain, Terra Money, Crypto.com, and of course the Cosmos Hub hosting the Atom token. Uh, while there's many new commercial opportunities, the thing that's really most exciting to me are about uh, real world systems to enable local communities to trade and build wealth independent of the ebbs and flows of the global financial system. And that's really what I'm in it for. I believe that the biggest business opportunities ever happen are those that solve real societal issues that humans have to face. So we need to act. I don't think we have much time as a humanity, as we know it, to, to take care of the future of our children. We have less than 10 years. <clears throat> so we need to act on the real issue and not staying in our comfort. And Crin is, is, is connecting unusual players to come together because it isn't just the, the, the academic side, as, as you well know, and or, or industry that needs to come together. But inside of the Clean, Clean Resource Innovation Network, we actually bring the entire ecosystem, which is not just those, those, those two groups or government funders. It is all of the entrepreneurs, it's students, it's young professionals, it's the financial system, which CDL gets. CDL is, is absolutely really um, not completely everything that's here, but it's a huge component and it really gets how to pull, pull those things together. And the $1.5 trillion direct contribution to the global economy of the ocean uh, could double by 2030, according to ECD. Uh, as an example, offshore wind alone has the potential to generate more than 420,000 terawatt hour per year worldwide, uh, says the International Energy Agency. So that is 18 times global demand today. Many countries and international organizations like the OECD are in the process of drafting responsible AI regulations to protect the public, minimize discrimination and other potentially negative social impact of deployed AI systems. And I think that companies should really consider that in their plans rather than go for the traditional free for all attitude in, in uh, information technology that has been the rule in the last few decades. Because um, otherwise they might be in for a lot of uh, bad surprises and wasted efforts, maybe designing products that will be banned or civilly restricted. So uh, if you're really interested in this, um, I encourage you to have a look at the uh, recently proposed legislation currently in front of the EU Parliament. Deep learning has a data problem. Uh, and when it comes to this audience right here, that actually is an excellent thing, right? Because it means first there are things to be improved about deep learning, but also because it has given rise to a tried and tested model for startup success. Get your hands on unusual data, deploy increasingly commoditized uh, uh, machine learning technology, and then improve your product. And the flywheel effect then basically implies that a better product leads to broader deployments, these beget more data, which in turn then allows you to further improve your product and so on. And this virtuous cycle is of course, the reason why data is more precious than gold at the moment. What used to be a multi-ton satellite is now the size of a microwave or a fridge. You know, so we have advances in manufacturing and servicing and materials that will continue to expand what we put up in space. I love the names given to space missions right now. They seem to carry a different ethos. Hope from the UAE and Tianmen in Chinese means heavenly questions. And in my view, there is no more fitting moniker for our current opportunities in space. <laughs>